Hey everyone, in this video, we have to go through this multicollinearity issue. Multicollinearity issue, why I had made this video, because number of the viewers said, told to, uh, said me, uh, please ma'am, uh, prepare one video on multicollinearity issue, because whenever we are going to apply SEM, structure equation modeling in AMOS or uh, PLS SEM in a smart PLS, we are facing this multicollinearity issue. And uh, definitely that is true. First of all, we should clear this multicollinearity issue before going for any sort of test. Either we are going for regression in SPSS or we are going for structure equation modeling in, SP, in uh, AMOS or we are going through, through this uh, PLSM in smart PLS. So quickly we have to go through this multicollinearity issue, how we have to resolve it. So two things are very important that I would like to discuss in this video. So please stay connected till end. How to, and how to find multicollinearity, how we have to find out multicollinearity issue how we can say there is the multicollinearity on what basis we can say and the second issue we can see here second issue that is how to resolve this issue fine we have multicollinearity issue that's okay now how we have to resolve this issue so both these issues i would like to discuss in this video and suppose if you have any query or if you would like to feel i mean i have to create video on this particular topic so please please this is my request please write in the comment section then definitely next video i have to prepare on that particular topic or as well as I will share my uh, data set also in my description box, as well as I will share all the video links in my description box. So quickly, we have to finish this task first, how to find multicollinearity, right? First of all, before proceeding, we should understand what do you mean by multicollinearity. So multicollinearity explains intercorrelation between the variables and uh, those are our variables we have taken into consideration we have to understand uh, there if there is any intercorrelation so we have to resolve this first otherwise what will happen those results are coming these results would not be authentic this would, these results would not be uh, reliable so next we come to the predictor and what we can say another one is the predictor and we can say independent variables highly correlated then this is known as multicollinearity right so that means there is some issue either both the predictors are uh, stating the same thing or they belongs to see they, they belong to one particular characteristic so we have to try to resolve this issue i will tell you how you have to resolve this issue next one is the data set when we talk about, I have taken in this video, this data set I have taken, this one is the behavior is my dependent variable and brand image is my independent variable, first independent variable, second one is the brand quality, that is again independent variable and fourth one is my satisfaction, that is also independent variable. Then is how you have to find out multicollinearity in SPSS. Uh, number one is correlation. First, very, very important is correlation. If there is the high correlation among the predictors and dependent variables, that means more than 0.5. So that means we can say there is the chances of the multicollinearity. I mean, it should be closer to zero rather than it, it is closer to one. If this correlation is one, that means 100% we can say there is the multicollinearity. But it is closer to zero. That means we can say there is no multicollinearity issue. Um, in, in between these predictors or independent variables. Let's we come to the, we come over here, that is the tolerance value. Tolerance value, if it is less than 0 0.1, so that means we can say there's the uh, multicollinearity issue, VIF, variance, inflation factor, if it is greater than 5 or we can say greater than 10. So we can say we uh, we can say there's the multicollinearity issue. So VIF is, uh, what is this? There's the correlation. I mean, there's the uh, relationship between tolerance and VIF. VIF is equal to one by tolerance. And uh, last one is the condition index. Yes, of course, condition index, if it is greater than 15, that means we can say there is the multicollinearity issue. Now we come to the, next we come to the our data set. 
we have to see what is multicollinearity issue. I have taken this file, where is the behavior, image, quality, and satisfaction. This is the Z score also, but I will not use that score. Simply, we have to take all these variables. So, first of all, we have to go to my first point is correlation. Then we have to go to uh, this uh, bivariate correlation. Just a moment. We have to go to analyze, then we have to go to correlation, bivariate correlation. We will reset it. And what we have to do, we will take all these variables once again here image, quality, satisfaction. Then press OK. Now, output risk file, it is showing this, these are my results. Here is quality and image. Yes, of course, there is the correlation. Uh, correlation is on the higher side, 0 0.766, and but otherwise 0 0.527, 0 0.492. That means in both these cases, there is no multicollinearity issue. But how we have to check through other uh, um, indicators? Uh, this one is the we will apply regression. First, again, I'm repeating regression linear, then reset it. After that, behavior is my dependent variable, image is my independent variable, quality is my independent variable, satisfaction is my independent variable. We will go to statistics. These are already checked, but I would uncheck both these boxes. Why? Because I don't want any model fit because I'm not running regression over here. And uh, I don't want any estimates regression coefficients, right? So simply I want collinearity diagnostic. So you have to check this box collinearity diagnostic, please continue and then press okay. So these are my results over here. Now you can see here, this collinearity and uh, VIF, right? So I have to copy this thing in my Word document. I had already copied here. So now you can see here, uh, tolerance is 0 0.383, 0 0.402 in case of the satisfaction 0 0.704. And as I said in my PPT, it should be in this, when we are talking about tolerance value, it should be less than 0 0.1. And that is actually existing, right? If it is a less than 0 0.1, then there is the multicollinearity issue. But in my case, there is no multicollinearity issue. Next, we come to the VIF. Right, we are if it is greater than five, so that means there is the multicollinearity issue. Let me check my in my case. So 2.608, So that means there is no multicollinearity issue because all the values are less than five. Right, so there is no multicollinearity issue. Next, we come to the third point is uh, that is VIF one by tolerance. You understand condition index. When we go to condition index, let me go to my output file. And uh, in my output file, this part we have to copy to my Word document. There would be more visibility, more clarity. So you can see here in my culinary diagnostic, this is the condition index 1, 13, 17, 22, right? So those are, we can say here, I'm in 13, 17, and 22. In this case, because both the values are 17.936 and 22.436, in this case, we can say, yes, this one is the, there is the multicolinearity issue. We should resolve this, right? It should be below 15. 13 is all right, but 17 and 22 both are above 15. So we have to try to resolve this. And sometimes people are saying eigenvalue is also somewhere is reflecting multicollinearity issue if it is closer to zero. So that means there is the multicollinearity issue. So I hope uh, this uh, video is uh, um, uh, more helpful to you. And uh, that could be helpful to you how you have to find out multicollinearity issue. Um, next thing is we have to come over here, uh, how we have to resolve it, right? I said in the, start, in the beginning of the video, two things we have to cover up in this video. One is how to find out multicollinearity. And second is how to resolve this issue. So first statement is already clear. I'm sure you understand how you have to find out multicollinearity through these indicators. And second statement is how to resolve this issue. So simple thing I have already done in my 
data set because I have sent one research paper to a very good journal. So there was the multicollinearity issue in my paper before starting any structure equation modeling. So what I did, what I did, that predictor was creating this multicollinearity. I had removed that predictor in my data analysis. So this is the first option you can do this. Either you can remove this predictor or second one is merge these predictor with, I mean, those two predictors are showing multicollinearity. So you can merge them, merge each other. You have to be, there would be one latent construct you can create through these predictors. I mean, or you can merge both these predictors together. So this is the only solution through which you have to get rid of multicollinearity issue. I hope this video is, it will be helpful to you. And I'm sure keep watching. Thanks for watching my video. Thank you so much.